telecom and facilities and the users themselves, and they're all providing what their phone number is, and we always choose to not tap into it. So as I called into the system, we did a dip against that database, and by the time my Linksys phone was ringing, we had correct name display for an incoming cell phone call. Now that we're looking at the voicemail page, and I have literally hundreds of milliseconds in which to render the page, we're going to pull in even more information. We're going to get my instant messenger status, all of my other callback numbers, uh, we're going to pull my mugshot off the internet, and the, the little Yahoo logo here links out to our internet, so you can look at who's my boss, uh, what are my hours of operation, link out to my calendar. Uh, the second one here is actually a vendor, Harold, who's in the audience here. Uh, when Harold called in the first time, all we got was a numeric display. So I listened to the message, it says, hi, this is Harold, and we clicked add this person to the, the database, and then I marked it as shared. So from now on, when anybody dials, when Harold dials anybody at Yahoo, they're also going to get the display. So pretty excited that we're just able to plug this into the database, we're able to plug this into data sources that we already have, and everybody gets a little smarter. Uh, the other thing that's worth mentioning, one of the reasons that we chose to write our own front end is we're tying this into our own authentication system. So to get to this page, you're logging in with your username and password that you use for everything else, uh, for your email, for your HR interactions, your requesting time off, so on and so forth. And we attach that user ID to your extension. So when you get to this page, we've authenticated you in a really rich, meaningful way for IT, which means I'm okay with you doing self-service pin reset on this page. If you've forgotten your PIN, you never set it up, whatever. Uh, what's great about this is that's a whole classic ticket that adds no value. IT doesn't like working on it. Users don't like calling in about it. And it's just self-service now. We just don't get those calls. This is the page people go to to self provision a soft phone. So 2,000 people at Yahoo are entitled to a soft phone on top of their desk phone. Uh, and we have another 800 users that are actually soft phone only without a desk phone at all. Uh, we made this self-service part because we're using XLite, which let people download it themselves, and because we're just giving them their own credentials, if they like Zoiper or if they want to bring in a Wi-Fi phone, that's actually enabled. We're, we're really positive about letting people do this. Uh, I mentioned a second ago we do have a lot of people that are soft phone only. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a backstory to that. We had a, a tower that we chose to close in Santa Clara this year. About a thousand people needed to move out of it and move into a building that was unfortunately still a buy phones. Uh, we didn't have budget to replace them all with Linksys phones. We didn't really want to do a thousand buy -a tickets either, because that's not the direction we're facing. So the bargain that we came up with was we actually made it an opt-in program. We sent out an email. We said, if you choose to reply to this or put in a ticket, uh, when you get to your new desk, there won't be a desk phone. And instead, we're going to give you a $30 Plantronics headset and access to a selection of free soft phones. Uh, of the people that we surveyed, 25% took us up on it, which that's got its pros and cons. Every now and again, you'll read an article that says the desk phone is dead, everybody's going to go to soft phone. I, I heard that at the OCS uh, talk. I don't think that's true. Our numbers don't back that up. We're a pretty tech savvy company. But I do think those 25% are an indicator that's definitely worth looking at. So, this isn't the Oprah show. Uh, I tried to get budget to give everybody a Kindle. That didn't work. So, instead, I'm going to try and leave you with some nuggets of wisdom. Uh, the first one, as I'm preparing this talk, I started thinking about the, the transition between the scrappy upstart technology and the, we're the standard technology of a Fortune 500 company with 40 people trained on the solution. That transition was actually really hard for me personally and professionally. It was, a, it was a very tough time in my career to make that transition. And it occurred to me that I'm gonna be encouraging a whole room full of people to go down the same road knowing that there's this huge pothole in the middle of it. So I started thinking through what are the things that I can say to the engineer who's going to have this solution that they're very proud of, that they've spent all this effort on, suddenly under this, this new set of review, and how can, we, how can that person make peace with this? So uh, the first metaphor that I thought of, because it's very cliche, was maybe it's like sending your kids off to college. You've done all this hard work, you've gotten them to survive adolescence, now you have to let them leave the nest. Uh, my daughter's four months old, so that didn't mean anything to me. So as I often do when I need inspiration, I turn to space play. This is the space shuttle. Uh, the white pointy bits on the side are solid rocket boosters, the little cluster of gray engines and the main engines. As you can obviously see from this picture, the boosters are doing all the work at this point in the flight. The main engines, at this point, don't have enough get up and go to make the ship hop. So the boosters are doing 